Hello and welcome to our series on APA style. Previously in the series, we've already talked a little bit about one of the things that APA shows you how to do in a particular way, which is how to set up and format the document for your paper. And in this video, we're gonna start talking about how to format your references for your paper. And there are multiple types of sources that you might include as research. That could be websites, it could be scholarly journal articles, it could be books, it could even be other kinds of multimedia, like let's say a YouTube video, for instance. But the two most common types of sources that you would include are website articles and scholarly journal articles. And in this video, we will focus on how to reference website articles. Now, before we dive into the details of the formatting of your references, you might be asking yourself, why do we need a references page in the first place? Is this just for my professor to double check if I'm plagiarizing anything or not? No, not really. So the entire point of the references is number one, of course, to give credit to the original authors of works that you took information from, but also number two, to make sure that everything is traceable. So let's say, for instance, that you're an expert in your field, you've written a paper on a particular topic and you've submitted that to a journal and that journal publishes your paper. Now there's another expert in your field who ends up reading your paper and they see that you quoted Rodriguez on something that they are very interested in and they would like to know more about that. So they are going to go down to your references page, look alphabetically for Rodriguez, and now they have all the information that they need to find the original Rodriguez article and read that one as well. So you need to make sure that everything is traceable because writing is a form of communication and you want to be able to access everything that the original writer accessed when they wrote that particular article. Imagine that somebody is reading an article on a topic that they have an academic interest in and something that was quoted or paraphrased within that article really sort of sparks a light bulb moment for them and they feel like they're on the precipice of an interesting new theory or concept or discovery and they need access to all of those resources in order to be able to really put all of their thoughts together cohesively to develop those new ideas that were sparked. And so they rush to your references page and the references that they need are not there. So how is this person ever going to cure cancer now? I might be a little bit overdramatic with my curing cancer example, but it is really important to make sure that others can access all of the same sources that you accessed, because that is one of the ways in which different experts in a given field can help to propel that field forward and make new discoveries and new advancements. All right, now that I've hopefully convinced you that references do actually matter, let's talk APA formatting for website article references. When we are referencing website articles, there's a few elements that we must include. We start with the author or authors, then we've got the date, then we need the title of that article. We might need the name of the website, and then we're going to need the URL for that article. Now, when you're looking up website articles, there's a couple issues that you might encounter. For example, you might not find an author that was listed for that article. You also might not find a date. So these might feel like issues, but APA does provide a way to make up for the lack of author or the lack of date. So let's take a look at a couple different website articles and work on how you would put the reference together based on the information that we find on the site. All right, let's say that I'm writing a paper about bipolar disorder, and this is one of the sources that I have found. It is from Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. It's a .org site. I verified that it seems to be a reliable source, and now I need to include a reference for it. So the first thing I need to look for is an author. So let's start scrolling, and here she is. We even have a picture. So it's Nora Volkow comma, MD. Now I do not need to include any information other than the name. So if it has any titles for the authors, you can leave those out of your reference. I start always with the last name. So I'm writing Volkow and then I have a comma and then I'm going to do the first initial. So just N with a period next to it. 
If there had been a middle name here, I would also have included an initial for the middle name. After that, I need to have the date. This is going to go in parentheses, so I want to open my parentheses. And then I'm looking for the date of publication of this article. I see a date down here, but it just says Scientific Council member joined 2001. So that's not really when this article was published. That's when this particular author joined the council. So I need to scroll around and look for a date. If I scroll all the way down, I don't really see a date related to this article. Let's scroll all the way up. And it's really tiny, but it's right here. We see November 12th, 2020. So for websites, the way I'm going to format this is I'm gonna start with the year 2020 and then have a comma and then the date, November spelled out 12. Then I would close my parentheses and add a period. Okay, so we've taken care of the date. Now, the title of the article. That's right up here in bold. Study reveals adults with mental disorders are at significantly higher risk of COVID-19 and have poorer outcomes. Pretty long title. It's all got to go in there. Now, the thing about titles for website article names and the references is that number one, we only capitalize the first word. If there were a subtitle, like let's say we had a colon and then more title, we would capitalize the first word of the subtitle as well, but that's not the case here. So we're only capitalizing the first word and then anything within here that you would normally have to capitalize, like the name of a country, for example, or an acronym. So for example, COVID-19, we would have to capitalize COVID the way it is here, but everything else would be lowercase. And then also the title of an article needs to be in italics. So we're putting this website article title in italics and only capitalizing the first word and the word COVID. Okay, period after that. The next thing that I need is the name of the website. So that's going to be up here, Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. So we'll write that in, capitalize it normally. And then after a period, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the entire URL for this source, and you can hyperlink it within your document. So that covers the entire reference for a website article that does have an author and it does have a date. Okay, I've also found another good website article for my paper. Looks like this. Now the issue here is that I scrolled all over and I could not find an author and I also could not find a date. So what do we do in this circumstance? Even if you don't technically have an author, you still have an author because the author will be the name of the organization or the institution responsible for this information. In this case, the institution is the National Institute of Mental Health. So that is going to be my author. That's what I start with and I capitalize it normally, the N, the I, the M, the H. So I write that out as my author. Next up, I'm still supposed to put the date in parentheses, but I don't have a date. So what do I do instead? I'm going to write n dot d dot. So this represents the phrase no date. So even though you don't have a date, your reader still needs to be able to know that there was no date provided for this article. So you close out your parentheses, you put your period, and now we can continue as normal. What is the title of this article? Pretty simple, the title is Bipolar Disorder. Once again, I'm only capitalizing the first word, bipolar. I'm going to put all of this in italics and I'm going to put a period at the end of my title. Now, next up is supposed to be the name of the website, but usually when you don't have an author and you're putting the name of the organization as your author, that also happens to be the name of the website. So in this case, I don't actually need to include it because I already wrote National Institute of Mental Health as my author. I'm not going to put it in twice. So I can just jump at this point to the URL, copy paste, hyperlink, you're good to go. And that's it. Once you know the rules, what elements go in which order, what to capitalize, what to italicize, then it's really just a matter of plugging things in. In our next video in the series, we'll continue talking about how to format your references, but we'll focus on the references for scholarly journal articles because those look a little bit different. See you there.